All right, welcome. Today we are going to cover discrimination and differentiation in ABA. These two terms are two of the most commonly requested terms I get when asked questions about the RBT or BCBA exam. The thing is they're very similar and at the same time different. And if we remember a few key things, these two terms become very easy to not only identify on the exam, okay, but to answer questions correctly on the exam. So we're gonna go over discrimination and differentiation. We're gonna go over a few practice questions to practice our ability to answer questions on these terms. And then we're gonna wrap it up. So be sure to like and subscribe, check out rbtexamreview.com or bcbastudy.com. Leave a comment below, email me for any questions, work hard, study hard. Let's get to it. All right, first things first, maybe the most important thing to remember when we're dealing with discrimination and differentiation is that differential reinforcement leads to the, these two things. So whether you're discrimination training or your differentiation training, you're using differential reinforcement, meaning you're going to be reinforcing something and putting another thing on extinction. If we're using stimulus discrimination, we're gonna be reinforcing responses in the presence of the identified or the desirable stimulus and putting, re and putting responses in the presence of the undesirable stimulus on extinction. Response differentiation, very similar. We're gonna be reinforcing the responses we want to see and putting the responses we don't want to see on extinction. It's as easy as that, okay? It's not any more complicated than reinforcing what you want and putting what you want on extinction. So don't overcomplicate it. Second thing, we often, often, often refer to it as discrimination and differentiation. A good way to remember the difference is to go by the technical terms. Technically, discrimination is actually called stimulus discrimination and differentiation is called response differentiation. Why is that important? Because the word is right in the term, right? If we're talking about discrimination, we know we're talking about stimuli, okay? We're trying to tell the difference between stimuli. If we're talking about differentiation, we know we're talking about responses. We want to be able to engage in different responses. So that is the brief rundown of what differential reinforcement, okay? What role it plays in discrimination and differentiation. So let's dive a little deeper, okay, into discrimination. So discrimination, also known as stimulus discrimination. Remember, this is how we're going to remember it if we keep forgetting. The technical term has the word in it. Discrimination is just stimulus discrimination. Discrimination involves discrimination training. Simply, you have one behavior in the presence of two stimulus conditions. So if we are, for example, identifying a color, our stimulus conditions might be red card and blue card. If I say point to red card, what behavior am I going to reinforce? Well, I'm obviously going to reinforce pointing to red card and not the blue card. And that's very quickly going to start teaching my client or my student to discriminate between red and blue. Why? Because when I say red, they receive reinforcement when touching red, but not blue. That's how behavior works. Example two, picking the correct classroom. So you are on a college campus, maybe you're in a high school campus and you need to identify the correct room. Well, you have room 201 and 202. You now have to identify or discriminate between 201 and 202. I might reinforce you for going in 201, but not 202. Now, what's, what, is the, what do you notice about this? In this case, we're dealing with a single response, right? Example one, we're just identifying a color. Example two, we're picking the correct classroom. It's the same response, right? But we're dealing with these multiple stimuli. We're just trying to tell the difference between the stimuli and engage in the response in the presence of the correct stimulus. One more note, you're gonna, of course, reinforce the behavior in the presence of the correct stimulus, but not in the presence of the incorrect stimulus. Again, it all comes down to differential reinforcement. Let's look at a quick question. So a client steals food. You want to teach her what food container she can eat out of and which container she cannot. How would you do this? So little note, this comes straight from the Cooper book, a study they did on discrimination and teaching a, I think it was a 14 year old girl to discriminate between containers. And they, what they did was they put labels, okay, on one container and on the other container 
to identify what she could and couldn't take. So in this case, you, you want to teach her what food containers she can eat out of and what containers she cannot. How would you do this? So obviously, we're going to try some sort of discrimination method, right? We're trying to discrimination train. We want to teach stimulus discrimination. So A, reinforce her for opening the correct container, but don't reinforce her if she can't open the correct container. So what's, what's the issue here? The issue here is we are looking at specific responses. Opening versus can't open. We're, we're, we're worried more about her choosing the right container, right? We can look at the responses later. But right now, we just want her to pick the correct containers. A focuses on one container, which is the correct one, rather than, and, and looks at the responses, rather than looking at the correct container versus the incorrect container. So A, we're not teaching discrimination of containers. We're just teaching different responses. B, put a green dot on the correct container. Reinforce if the client grabs the container with the green dot but not if she grabs the container without the dot. Okay, good, right? Same response, we've got grabbing the container. However, we're only reinforcing if she grabs the correct stimulus, which is the container with the green dot and not the container without the green dot. Understand the difference between A and B. A, we have the same stimulus with two different responses, opening versus not open. B, we have the same response, grabbing, okay, versus container with dot or container without dot. B is actually discriminating between those stimuli. You need to start identifying these little key features in your questions. That's gonna be how you get better at the exam, okay? See if the client grabs the wrong container, take away TV privileges for 30 minutes. Remember, we're using differential reinforcement. C is more of a punishment procedure. Now, not saying every intervention is not going to have punishment, right? But in this case, B is better because we are actually differentially reinforcing. And then D, when the client grabs the wrong container, put it on extinction. Good. That's only part of it, though, right? We are, in D, there is no instance of reinforcing the right container. So we're not actually differentially reinforcing. We're just using extinction, which is part of differential reinforcement. But we want to complete that intervention. And B does that. We have our container with the green dot container without the green dot. If she grabs the container with the green dot, reinforce. If not, extinction. B is differential reinforcement. That's how we teach stimulus discrimination. Okay, let's get to differentiation. Again, remember the key technical word, response differentiation. We are now focused on responses, teaching different responses, not so much the stimuli, right? So let's look at it. Differenti differentiation training. Reinforced responses occur more frequently compared to unreinforced responses. That should be obvious, but that's what differentiation is. We're going to take a response class, responses that serve the same function, and we're going to start reinforcing the response we want to see and not the one we don't. And over time, what's going to happen? Well, the response that's being reinforced is going to occur more than the one that's not. This leads to a new response class and is related to shaping. Differentiation is directly related to shaping because just because we don't have the full behavior doesn't mean we can't differentially re or we can't differentially reinforce a response and shape up that response, right? So example one, polite asking, again, straight from the Cooper book, saying, please, can I versus can I? So in the book, they say, or they give the example of polite asking and a parent would only given to the request if the kid used polite language. So in this case, we're reinforcing please can I and putting can I on extinction. What's going to happen? As we reinforce please can I, that response is going to increase. Can I going to decrease? Differentiating between the responses. Eventually, please can I becomes its own response class. Example two, very common example, gaining attention, hitting versus tapping on the shoulder. So if I want to teach my client to appropriately gain attention with a peer or a parent or whoever it might be, what am I gonna reinforce? Well, I'm going to reinforce tapping on shoulder and put hitting on extinction. Eventually, tapping on shoulder is going to increase when gaining attention, hitting is going to decrease. Think about the difference between discrimination and differentiation. Differentiation, we are focused all about the responses. 
discrimination, all about stimuli. Let's look at a question. A treatment room door says push to open, but your client always attempts to pull it open and requires a prompt to open the door. How could you teach your client to push the door open? So immediately, why do we know this is differentiation? Well, consider what we're targeting. We're targeting different responses. The client, every time he has this door that he needs to push, he's trying to pull it. And we want him to push it. So we have this one door for this treatment room. We want him to push it instead of pull it. We need to differentiate between those responses. And as we reinforce pushing, pulling is going to go down. So how are we going to teach him to do this? A, reinforce your client for walking into their treatment room and not someone else's treatment room. Well, in this case, what is he doing? He's got one response. He's walking, right? But he's walking into the correct treatment room. So he's actually discriminating between stimuli. The, treat, the condition of his treatment room versus the condition of someone else's treatment room. A is teaching discrimination. We're looking for differentiation. B, deliver punishment when your client attempts to pull the door open. Again, we're trying to use differential reinforcement. Not saying punishment won't be part of the procedure, but is there a better way to do it than just delivering punishment every time they try to pull the door open? C, reinforce approximations of pushing the door until you reach the terminal behavior while putting pulling the door on extinction. All right, this looks pretty good, right? We're shaping up pushing the door. So every time they engage in any approximation of pushing, we're going to reinforce until we reach the actual behavior of pushing. And then we're going to put pulling the door on extinction. Great use of differential reinforcement plus shaping. And the D, put pulling the door on extinction. Again, yes, but C is better. Remember, on our exams, we want the best answer. So B, you can certainly use punishment if allowed. D, you can use extinction. However, C is the best. We're using differential reinforcement plus shaping, and we're completing those interventions. All right, let's wrap it up. A little summary. Remember, differential reinforcement leads to discrimination and differentiation. You want to think responses or stimuli. Am I looking at stimulus discrimination, telling the difference between two stimuli? Or are we trying to teach different responses, reinforce one response or, and put another on extinction? Response differentiation. It's the quickest, easiest way to remember this. Response differentiation is also associated with shaping. For example, red or blue would be what? Would be stimuli discriminating between red and blue. Point or grab, those are responses. We're going to differentiate between point or grab. You can see how these are related, right? Because I might you want you to point red at some point and grab red at some point, or point to blue, grab red. So these can go hand in hand. They, they kind of exist in the same world. We're just looking at different targets. Okay, thanks for watching. Please visit our websites for more, like, and subscribe. Four times a week, we put out RBT exam questions and BCBA questions. Be sure to check out all of those. Check out our study materials, rbtexamreview.com or bcbastudy.com, depending on what you're getting ready for. As always, questions, comments, I'd love to help. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.